beautiful souls. Welcome back to another episode of Lyric and Letter, where the power of worship meets the life-changing truth of Scripture. I'm Rebecca, your guide on this journey of faith and song. Whether you're tuning in for the first time or you're a cherished part of our returning family, I am thrilled to share this time with you. Now today, we're diving into a song that's not just a melody, but a heartfelt declaration. It's Heart of It All by Victory House Worship, and it's all about making Jesus the center of our worship and our lives. Now this sounds like a no-brainer, but sometimes we need to be reminded in the hustle and bustle of our lives that Jesus is the center. This song challenges us to move beyond service-level religion and embrace a deep, authentic relationship with Christ. Trust me, I need to hear this as much as you do today. Why? Because in the midst of this podcast and trying to arrange everything that's going on within the community, sometimes I turn from Mary to Martha. I I do things for God, but I forget to spend time with God. So this is a reminder for myself as well. And this song challenges us to move beyond surface level religion and embrace a deep, authentic relationship with Christ. But before we dive into the lyrics and their profound biblical connection, I invite you to settle in. Grab your coffee, a pen and notebook, your Bible, and nestle into your favorite spot. And if you're on the go, perhaps driving on your commute or taking a walk, just try to put away distractions for a time and let's lean into the heart of our Lord together. Preparing our hearts for this time with the Lord is essential. Let's take a moment to quiet our minds and open our spirits to His presence. Ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate His Word and speak to you through this study. This is more than just a song analysis. It's a journey to get to the heart of the matter in our lives, to focus on what truly matters, our relationship with Jesus. Our anchor scripture for today, one that you can verse map, is Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, which says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, this verse encapsulates the core message of the song and serves as a foundation for our discussion. Now, if you're into verse mapping, there is one located on the website at www.lyricandletter.com. Just look for the link at the top. Okay, let's start with a short prayer to invite God's presence into our time together. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time to come together in worship and study of your word. We ask that you open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us today. Lord, illuminate the scriptures and lyrics we explore and help us to see your truth in a new and deeper way. May this time be a blessing to each listener and draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's dive in and explore how Heart of It All calls us to place Jesus at the very center of our lives and worship. Together, we'll discover the deep truths interwoven in its lyrics and reflect on how they resonate with our personal walk with Christ. Let's listen to the first part of the song. We are done with just pretending That religion is still working We don't want it if it's missing Jesus at the heart We are desperate for revival
Wow, isn't that just powerful? This song goes deep into your spirit right away, reminding us of the importance of keeping Jesus at the center of everything we do. It's a beautiful invitation to align our hearts to His. Now let's take a closer look at the first verse of this song and explore the scriptures that undergird the profound lyrics. It says, we are done with just pretending that religion is still working. We don't want it if it's missing Jesus at the heart. We are desperate for revival. Rid the temple of our idols. Crush tradition if it rivals Jesus at the heart. This verse calls out the pretense of empty religion and emphasizes the need for genuine worship that places Jesus at the heart. It reminds me of Isaiah 1, verses 11 through 17, where God expresses his disdain for meaningless rituals and calls us to genuine repentance and justice. He says, stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. God doesn't play here. He desires our hearts to truly seek him, not just go through the motions. And when we think about empty worship, it's easy to picture rituals and sacrifices of ancient times, but it's also very relevant to us today. How often do we find ourselves just going through the motions, attending church, singing songs, even reading our Bibles, yet our hearts are not engaged with what we're doing? We might follow a routine fitting God into our schedules, but missing the relationship. It's like we're on autopilot, checking off some spiritual to-do list without truly connecting with Jesus. Now, I'm guilty of this just as much as anybody because I'm a doer. I am a task-oriented person. We can fill our lives with religious activity, but if Jesus isn't at the heart of it, it's all just empty ritual. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 reminds us, Love the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This verse calls for a total and complete devotion to God. It's not just about what we do. It's about the love and passion we put into it. God desires a relationship with us that is vibrant and full of life, intimate and personal. The song also expresses a desperate cry for revival and a call to rid our lives of idols. Habakkuk 3 verse 2 captures this longing perfectly. It says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. It's a plea for God to revive his works in our time. But what does revival look like in our lives? It's not necessarily a big tent meeting with lots of people. Rather, it's something that happens deep within us. Revival begins with a personal awakening to God's presence and power in our lives. It's a rekindling of our passion for Jesus a renewed commitment to reading and digesting and studying his word, and a transformation of our hearts. When revival happens within us, it impacts our actions, our relationships, and ultimately our entire lives, including our communities. Similarly, Ezekiel 14 verse 6 calls us to turn away from anything that takes God's place in our hearts. It says, Therefore say to the people of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. Now, idols are not just some statues or images. 
They can be anything that we prioritize above God. Our careers, our relationships, our hobbies, even our ministries, our phones, our comforts, and our desires. And as we reflect on these lyrics and scriptures, let's be honest with ourselves. Are there any areas in our lives where we've been merely pretending? Going through the motions without genuine devotion? Are there idols we need to remove to make Jesus the center of our worship? Just take a moment right now to meditate on this concept. And let's prepare our hearts for the next part of the song. And we'll continue our deep dive into the lyrics and their scriptural foundations in just a moment. Okay, now that we've reflected on the first verse, let's move on to the chorus. It says, it's you that we're after, you that we want. Nothing else matters when you're at the heart of it all. This chorus of the song is a powerful declaration of our desire to seek Jesus above all else. And it's easy to do that when we're in the middle of singing the song, but entirely different when we're walking it out in our daily lives. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. This verse emphasizes the importance of wholehearted pursuit. It's not just about wanting Jesus. It's about seeking him with everything we have. It's a promise that when we truly seek him, we will find him. But what does seeking Jesus with all your heart look like in our daily lives? For me, it means setting aside intentional time each day to be with him. Not just checking off a devotional box like we're going to be doing with our course study, but truly connecting not picking up the phone first thing, taking a deep breath in and out and saying, good morning, God, connecting with our Father first. Now, maybe for you, it means turning off all distractions like social media for a day, television, or even just the noise of a busy life. To create space for God, maybe go for a walk, spend some time in the bathroom alone with Him if you need to. <laughs> it's called it's a call to prioritize Him in every decision, in every moment of our day. Matthew 13, verse 45 through 46, gives us the beautiful parable of the merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he sells everything to buy it. This parable illustrates the incomparable worth of the kingdom of heaven and, by extension, Jesus Himself. Finding Jesus and making him the center of our lives is worth giving up everything else. Nothing else matters when he's at the heart of it all. So take a moment. Think about this. What are the pearls in your life that might be taking precedence over your relationship with Jesus? It could be career ambitions, personal goals, or even good things like family and ministry. But if they come before your relationship with Jesus, they can become idols too. The challenge is to surrender these things to him, recognizing that he is the greatest treasure. Galatians 2 verse 20 speaks to the transformation that happens when we place Christ at the center of our lives. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Our old self is gone, and our new life is entirely centered on Jesus. It's a complete shift in our identity and priorities. This, this verse challenges me to examine my life and ask, am I living out this transformed identity? Is Christ truly living in me and through me in every area of my life? It's about letting go of our own agendas and embracing God's plan for us, allowing His Spirit to lead us in all we do. 
It's one of the main reasons why I created In Christ Alone, 31 Days to Discover Your Identity in Christ. That was a personal walk in my life that I brought out into the public. We'll talk more about that later. John 15 verse 5 further reinforces this by reminding us of our dependence on Jesus. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. When Jesus is at the heart of our lives, we are connected to the source of all life and fruitfulness. Apart from him, we can do nothing of eternal value. Think about this. Are you trying to do things for God without actually being connected to him? I know I found myself spending so much time on media doing things for God, but not with God. This verse is a reminder to me to remain in him, to stay connected to the vine. It's about shifting from doing to being, being in his presence, being led by his spirit, and being filled with his love and power. As we reflect on this chorus, let's consider, are we truly seeking Jesus with all of our hearts? Is he the most valuable treasure in our lives? Are we living out our identity in him and bearing fruit through our connection to him? Okay, let's take a moment to listen to the second verse of the song as we reflect on what we just learned. So powerful. I just found myself just wanting to lay it all down, just be on my face before the Lord. <laughs> this second verse of the song emphasizes surrender and passionate pursuit of Jesus. But let's break this down and see what scripture has to say about these themes. The first line, we abandon our agenda, reminds me of Matthew 16, verse 24 where Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. True discipleship requires self-denial and surrender to Christ. It's about letting go of our own plans and embracing God's will for our lives. In our busy lives, it's easy to prioritize our own comfort and convenience over God's agenda. We might prefer to stick to our routines, focusing on our own needs and our desires, but abandoning our agenda isn't about self-denial to the point of misery. Instead, it's about aligning our hearts with the heart of Jesus. It's about shifting our focus from being self-centered to loving others first, just as Jesus did. And loving others at that level requires self-sacrifice. It means reaching out to someone that might have hurt you. Or maybe it's taking that 3 a.m. call, interrupting your precious sleep because your best friend needs desperately someone to talk to. Or maybe it's giving up that $5 Starbucks in order to buy some toilet paper that someone might need because they can't afford it on their current budget. Or maybe instead of scrolling TikTok, you take that time to lift up your loved ones in prayer. Okay, next, the line, make an altar of surrender, ties in beautifully with Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, where it says, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Surrendering to God means trusting him completely and submitting all our ways to him. It's about creating an altar in our hearts where we lay down our will and embrace his. This can look like daily acts of laying down our desires and asking God to align our hearts with his. Trusting him even when we don't understand his ways or it doesn't make sense or it's inconvenient. The verse continues with, take our worship, let it honor Jesus at the heart. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 10, verses 31 says, so whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Every aspect of our lives, including our worship, should honor God. It's about making sure that Jesus is truly at the heart of everything we do. This means checking our motives and ensuring that our worship is genuine and Christ-centered, not just going through the motions. Now, the second part of the verse, we pursue you with a passion that's consumed by one obsession, that our worship is no less than Jesus at the heart. This speaks to the intensity and focus of our pursuit of God. And this was perfectly reflected in King David when he wrote Psalm 42. In verse 1, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Now, this vivid imagery illustrates a deep thirst and longing for God. Our pursuit of Jesus should be marked by a passionate desire to know him more and to make him the central focus of our lives. Philippians 3 verse 10 captures this passionate pursuit. Paul said, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him. In his death. Now, here, Paul expresses a deep desire to not only know Christ intimately, but to experience his power and even share in his sufferings. This kind of passionate pursuit involves a daily commitment to seek Jesus above everything else, to prioritize our relationship with him over everything. As we reflect on this verse, let's commit to abandoning our own agenda and making an altar of surrender in our hearts. Let's ensure that our worship honors Jesus and that our pursuit of him is passionate and focused. And these principles guide us in deepening our relationship with Jesus, making him the center of everything we do. So are there areas in your life where you need to shift from self-centeredness to Christ-centered focus? How can you align your hearts more closely with Jesus and make him the center of your worship and daily life? While you're focusing on that, let's move on to the bridge of the song and see how it brings the focus entirely onto Jesus. Only Jesus, only your presence. Only Jesus, there's nothing better. Only Jesus, now and forever, all we want is you. Come on, sing that out. Only Jesus, only your presence. Only Jesus, there's nothing better. Only Jesus, now and forever, all we want is you.
Now, I know that seemed repetitious, but I wanted to play it in its entirety for a reason. These lyrics remind us that Jesus is the center of our faith and the only one who can truly satisfy our deepest needs. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this verse emphasizes the exclusivity of Christ. Jesus is the only way to God and the only truth that sets us free, the only source of eternal life. In a world full of many paths and truths, this is a profound reminder that only Jesus can lead us to the Father. Now think about this in your own life. How often do we look for satisfaction in things other than Jesus? We might turn to success, relationships, material possessions, anything to fill the void. But they can never truly satisfy. Only Jesus can meet our deepest needs and desires. Acts 4, verse 12, reinforces this message. It says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Our salvation and hope are found in Christ alone. This truth calls us to place our complete trust in him and to recognize that nothing else can save us or give our lives true meaning. Reflect on the idea that there's nothing better in the presence of Jesus. His presence brings peace, joy, and fulfillment that nothing else can provide. Colossians 2 verses 9 through 10 says, For in Christ... All the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. This verse speaks to the sufficiency of Christ. In him, we find everything we need. We are complete and whole in him. Now let's get real for a moment. In America... We live in a state of abundance. Even our poor are usually provided for. It's not like these third world countries that we have to walk three miles for a pitcher of dirty water. We have access to so much material wealth and comfort that it might seem like we don't need God as much, or at least we think we don't. So what does this scripture mean? to have everything we need in Christ when we already have so much. Having everything we need in Christ goes beyond material wealth. It's about finding peace that surpasses all understanding, as seen in Philippians 4, verse 7. An assurance of our identity in Him and a sense of purpose that material things can't provide. It's the knowledge that our worth is not tied to our possessions, but to our relationship with Jesus. So consider this. Even with all our abundance, why do so many people feel empty or unfulfilled? It's because material wealth, financial gain, cannot fill the void that only God can. Jesus offers us something far greater, his very presence. In his presence, we find true peace, true joy, and ultimate fulfillment. It's a peace that comes from knowing we are loved unconditionally and that our lives have eternal significance. It's about knowing him here, now, as well as for all eternity. Philippians 4 verse 19 assures us, 
and my God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. This promise isn't just about material need. It's about emotional, spiritual, and relational needs as well. Jesus meets us in our deepest place of need, offering us his peace, his strength, and his love. As we reflect on this bridge, let's commit to making Jesus the sole focus of our lives. Let's recognize his exclusive role as our Savior and his sufficiency in meeting all of our needs. It's not about the abundance we have in this world, but about the richness of our relationship with him. Let's make it our prayer that all we want is Jesus, now and forever. Now, if you have never asked Jesus into your heart, I welcome you to do that right now. Pray this prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner, and I need you. You are my Savior. You are the creator of this world that came down in human form to die on my behalf so that we might be restored to life in you. I give my life over to you. It's yours. From now on, I follow you. Lord, help me. Help me to follow you. Help me to have a hunger for your word. Bring people alongside of me to help me in this journey. I pray this in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Send us a voice message through Spotify or email us at lyricandletterpodcast at gmail.com and let us know that you gave your life to Christ. And we will put you on our prayer list and get you connected with all of the resources in the community you need to move forward in your relationship with Christ. Okay, as we wrap things up, let's just kind of review what we've just explored. We've explored how this powerful song calls us to make Jesus the center of our worship and our lives. From the first verse, we're reminded about moving beyond empty rituals and embrace genuine heartfelt worship. We saw how important it is to seek revival, rid our lives of things that we've put before him and ensure that Jesus is truly at the heart of our faith. And the chorus emphasized our need to seek Jesus above all else where we're challenged to reflect on what it means to have Jesus as our greatest treasure, ensuring that he is the central focus of our lives and not letting anything else take his place. The second verse took us even deeper into the themes of surrender and passionate pursuit. We talked about abandoning our own agendas, making an altar of surrender, and ensuring that our worship is genuinely honoring Jesus. We reflected on the importance of pursuing Jesus with passion and single-minded devotion. Finally, the bridge brought us to the powerful truth that Jesus is everything we need. We discussed how even in our material abundance, true fulfillment and peace come only from Him. We were reminded that our identity, purpose, and satisfaction are found in Christ alone. So let's take this moment Grab your pen and notebook, and let's answer the following questions between you and the Lord. Feel free to pause the podcast and answer these in your notebook. How can you make Jesus the central focus of your life? Next, what steps can you take to ensure your worship is genuine and Christ-centered. Final question. In what ways can you invite his presence into your daily routines and decisions? Okay, let's end this time in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this time together. 
for the opportunity to dive deep into your word through this beautiful song. We ask that you help us to truly make you the center of our lives and our worship. Help us to abandon our own agendas and align our hearts with yours. Fill us with a passionate desire to know you more and to live out our faith with authenticity and love. Guide us in our daily lives and let your presence be our constant source of peace and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boy, this episode really spoke to me. I have been so busy doing and not enough time being. So thank you for journeying alongside of me in something that I desperately needed to hear for myself. They always say to write from where you are, and that's exactly what this was. So whether or not this was new to you or it is something that you really needed to hear, or maybe it was just like, oh, that's a nice episode. I want to invite you to join our vibrant community on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash lyric and letter, where we dive deeper and grow together in God's word. We love to share what we're grateful for, our favorite worship songs, what God is speaking to us every week. We have now moved the Friday night verse mapping to Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. And the reason why we're doing that is we're revisiting the identity devotional I wrote called In Christ Alone, 31 Days to Discover Your Identity in Christ. Now, this was a fan favorite that everybody said, please redo. So we're taking the verse of each day and we're doing it once a week, every Thursday at 8 p.m. This will be broadcast both on our Lyric and Letter Facebook group as well as our YouTube channel. But this time, I'm bringing my Scripture Sleuth crew along with me, and we are going to take the scriptures of every identity verse map, and we are going to expand it into a thematic verse map so that we can focus on one scripture of our identity every week for the next 31 weeks. We are also starting an exciting journey from Genesis to Revelation beginning June 1st, a deep dive study that promises to enrich your understanding and deepen your faith over the next three years. I would love for you to be part of this transformative experience. For more details on that, visit our blog at www.lyricandletter.com forward slash blog. Go to the post that says Community Study Plan, and there it outlines everything that we will be doing for the next three and a half years. Is it long? Yes. Is it in depth? Yes. Will it be worth it? Absolutely. And while you're on the website, you can access all of our past episodes, read our blog posts, dive into devotionals, and browse through the Lyric and Letter Boutique. And while there, sign up for the newsletter and download the devotional for today's episode. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing me to share this sacred space with you today. It's been a privilege to journey with you. Until next time, have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless.